Welcome to lesson 18 of the fundamentals of personal financial planning. This lesson may be a doozy, but it also may be the most valuable lesson in the sense that it will help you calculate your retirement and your educational as well as any other goals that you may have. Now this is, this is a disclosure. This lesson is a very simple method of calculating your retirement needs and or college savings. There are plenty of issues to consider, such as the fact that we're using static numbers and fixed rates of return. Uh, another thing to consider is when we're using this methodology, you must use correct inputs. Do not expect this to be an end-all, be-all solution. If you're using this as your guiding star for your financial plan, you will need to actually grow your money at the stated rates of return that you use or higher. Otherwise, you will be uh, disappointed or probably will fail in your goal. If inflation is higher than you calculate, then you will definitely have issues of uh, possibly running out of money. When using simple calculations like this, market volatility can have an effect. And for lastly, for retirement, the withdrawal rate methodology may not properly assume for inflation. These are all just examples of things to consider uh, when using something as simple as this. And again, ultimately, we recommend using either uh, the advice of a uh, certified financial planner or financial planning software. And again, just consistently reviewing your goals. So I debated for quite a while on how to balance between making this lesson easy uh, but still valuable. I decided to take a, a bit of a leap and I'll be teaching you some valuable stuff. The web page listed here in the slide will provide you a very turnkey calculator that you can use for all complicated, complicated calculations. I'll try to tab back and forth between this and this just so we can continue to um, go through the lesson. Now you'll still need your standard calculator to use for a very simple calculation such as adding, subtracting, multiplication, and division. On the slide you'll see that I noted that make sure that N, I, and P, M, T are all match. They all match and they're all within the same time frame, meaning annual. I'll explain what this means in a minute. Um, if you're advanced enough and you know how to use an HP 12C calculator or a TI 12B or any of the financial calculators, um, feel free to use those. Uh, however, teaching them how to use those is a whole other lesson. So I'm going to avoid that in order to make this as simple as possible for you, the student. Uh, again, only use the HP 12C or TI 12B if you're familiar with it. If you've never used them before, please do not attempt to do so now. If you're familiar with the calculator, again, you can either purchase one. There's emulators for Android, uh, Apple products. There's also a website that you can use. Um, but note, the website just has a disclaimer that's a toy. Uh, I've used it for hours and not had any sort of errors or uh, any sort of miscalculations. But again, this is all just if you know how to use the HP 12B. I'm sorry, HP 12C. Um, for those of you that are familiar with HP 12C and its reverse Polish notation, um, just note that you'll only be using the N, I, P, V, P, M, T, and F, V functions, nothing else. Um, but again, that's for those of you that are familiar. If you haven't used this calculator before, this is definitely, definitely not the day to start. So let's talk about the different numbers we'll need to know for every calculation. Uh, these things are the various inputs that we'll be using uh, whenever we're calculating anything. And they're shown here as well. You'll see N stands for the number of years. I is the growth rate or the inflation rate or any sort of rate of return. PV stands for present value. PMT stands for payments, contributions, uh, withdrawals, additions, subtractions, things like that and then uh, FV is future value. Growth rate is just, again, the growth that will be the, the rate of return, inflation, things like that. Present value is the money we'll be starting with, uh, if any. Payments or contributions, PMT, that is any sort of money coming in or going out of this perceived hypothetical account. Uh, and then future value is the number we want to end up with. So. With every calculation that we're going to do, we simply ask two questions. How much money do I need when the goal begins? How much money do we need on the day one of that goal? Um, and the second part is, how do I get there? Um, 
Each goal will have two phases for the other parts of their life, accumulation up to the goal, and the distribution of the funds while in that goal. For something like four years college planning for a six-year-old, the accumulation period will be 12 years, meaning now until age 18, and the distribution period will be four years because that's the four years that they'll be in college. For retirement planning, the accumulation period is a time before retirement, and the distribution period will be all the years while you're in retirement. When calculating things for your situation, you'll need to know a few things up front. These are just assumptions for now. You'll need to figure out an assumption that you want to use as your growth rate that you believe your investments can generate. Please note that you should probably use a different rate of return while you're accumulating compared to when you're distributing. Although that's not required, it is prudent. It may not be prudent to assume something like a 10% rate of return while in retirement since the risk associated with that may be too high. It's important to know that planning for a, low, for a lower rate of return, but aiming for a higher rate of return may be beneficial since it's unlikely you'll be disappointed that you'll have more money than you planned on. On the contrary, planning for a higher rate of return than achieved would almost certainly result in disappointment. The first question we need to ask is, how much money do I need when my goal begins? Again, think of day one of when your goal starts. For this, all we need to do is figure out what today looks like and then factor inflation into that number. You may hear me say things like inflate a figure or today's dollars. Today's dollars means what it costs today. If we inflate a figure, that means we're simply adjusting today's costs for future inflation. As a recap, we do this because, let's say, for example, if college costs are $5,000 a year in today's dollars, they will almost certainly have a higher nominal cost later in the future. The second step is to figure out what the various distribution scenario looks like based upon the annual cost being the payment from the investment account that you have set aside. Now, instead of reviewing all the technical aspects, uh, I think the best way that we can learn would be to go by this step-by-step -step through an example and work the example to an answer. Again, we'll go step-by-step -step so that you should be able to write your own situation as, as an example or restate the example as your own situation, replacing your numbers with the example's numbers. So let's look at Mary and Steve here. They want to send their child to college uh, named Joseph. Joseph is five years old. He'll attend college at age 18, 13 years from now. Their estimated college costs are $10,000 a year today. College costs are rising at 7% per year. Joseph will attend college for four years, and they, Mary and Steve feel comfortable that they can grow money at 8% per year. So let's look at these facts and figure out what distribution mode looks like. Again, what does, what does uh, day one of Joseph's college trip look like. So first we need to calculate the last year of college. So we'll take 13 years from the start. We'll add four years to the uh, to um, to the end of it. We'll figure that we'll going for 7% per year. And we know that college costs $10,000 today. What we don't know is what the future costs are. We don't know what college will cost in the future. So all we do for that is we take 17, put that into N, because that's the number of years we are away from that. For I, we're going to use 7. For PV, again, that's $10,000. That's the present value of today's costs. Zero goes into payment, because when we're calculating for inflation, the payment is always zero. You simply click future value and you should get $31,588.15. If you're inflating that cost, you should have gotten that number we just saw, the $31,588.15. And this is what, this, as we figured out, this is just what the last year costs. Like I said before, if we choose the last year, it's more expensive than the first year. This buffers in the inflation over the four years. Now college planning is a very simple project. There's only four years to plan for. So if we just took the $31,588, uh, multiplied it by four, you'd end up with $126,352. Um, just taking it multiplied by four, we should have a very safe number for four years. 
like I mentioned before, since we're figuring the last year of college's uh, costs, instead of the first year, we're going with a much higher number than needed. Therefore, multiplying by four should give us more than enough money for college, since the last year should be almost 20 to 30% 20 to higher than the first year of college. Okay, so we figured out how, that we need $126,352 13 years from today. The next question is, how do we accumulate that much money? Let's figure out what we know. We know that we need $126,352 in 13 years. We know that we're going to grow money at 8% per year from now until then. And let's assume that we're starting with nothing today, meaning we haven't started saving yet. Going back to our calculation, we know we have 13 years to grow the money. We know that we're going to grow money at 8%. That's our rate of return, or I. We're going to start off with 0. And we want to end up with 126,352. We solve for payment. We should see that they will they will need five thousand eight hundred seventy eight dollars and twelve cents per year that's how much they'll need to save you'll notice that the number is negative uh, as, as the previous one was well that is completely normal um, this means that Mary and Steve need to save five thousand eight hundred seventy eight dollars per year in order to achieve the hypothetical situation if you got all those numbers along the way that should make sense if it does make sense then please continue if it does not make sense, then please rewind and repeat the steps. Work the steps slowly until you understand what you're doing and what's until you're comfortable with everything. Feel free to write out the inputs, the growth, the cost, the inflation, etc. And ask yourself questions like, what are we solving for? Are we solving for present value or solving for payments needed? Again, each one of these steps, each one of these factors right here, each have a function. They all tie together. And if it doesn't make sense, again, please redo the exact amp the previous example. So let me repeat, just a quick recap here. There's two phases. The first phase is the distribution phase. The second phase is accumulation. This is what we're calculating. With the distribution, we're simply asking the question, how much money do we need on day one when we arrive at our goal, when the goal is ready? We figure out what future costs are based upon today's costs, meaning we inflate um, today's present, present costs. And then we ask ourselves, how many years do we have those costs for? In accumulation, we simply ask, we know how much money we need on day one of our goal. We need to find out how much do we need to get from there from today. How much money do we need to save in order to be ready on day one? Again, figuring out that day one. Now, retirement is not much different than college planning. You're merely using different numbers and different time horizons. Instead of multiplying by the number of years of college, retirement has a much larger time horizon. One very simple way to figure out your needs is to calculate the amount needed to be generated from your investments and then figure out that lump sum that can be that can provide you uh, provide that income to you using a withdrawal rate. Again, this is a very very simple methodology, not meant to be exhaustive. It is considerably better than doing nothing, though. So let's look at this example. Robert wants to retire in 25 years and have $35,000 in income generated from his investments. He expects to live for 35 years at the max, uh, and he expects inflation to be 3.5%. He feels he can earn 8% per year uh, while he's working on his investments, and 4% uh, he wants to use as a withdrawal rate in retirement. He does not wish to leave any legacy, so he plans on spending his assets down to zero in the 35th year. He feels that's safe, and he has not started saving for retirement. So, let's, take, let's look at the example, extrapolate, extrapolate what we know from the previous text. We know that we have to adjust $35,000 a year, <coughs> 25 years from now. So, we simply put 25 for N. 3.5% for, for I, meaning that's the inflation rate. We have a present value of 35000 Again, when figuring for inflation, payment is zero. And we want to figure out the future value. If you got a negative 82000 
71357, then you did it right. Now from there, all we're doing is we're taking, uh, we need to figure out what lump sum we need. So using a 4% withdrawal rate, what lump sum will we need in 25 years to generate 82713 per year? So again, all we would do is take the 87713 and $0.57. We would divide it by the 4% withdrawal rate. And we would wind up with $2,067,839. So, now that we know that our goal is we need to have $2,069,839.25, uh, on day one of retirement, we need to know how much money do we need to save on an annual basis in order to get there. So, we have 25 years to save. We can grow 8% per year. We're starting with zero. And we want to end up with 2,069,839 and 25 cents. If we solve for payment, we would need to have $20,312.87 saved on an annual basis, growing at 8% per year for 25 years in order to get the $2 million figure. So that's a lot of money. For a lot of people, $2,357 a month, meaning the $28,000 uh, number we, we generated earlier, may be a lot and maybe too much. If he's not started saving yet and wants to generate $35,000 a year, that might be a lot of money. An example like this, Robert may need to work longer uh, or he may need to spend less in retirement. Um, in real life, we don't know Robert or his situation, but if he's looking to completely replace his income, and he's currently making $35,000 a year today, saving $2,357 a month may be nearly impossible unless he has someone else supporting his lifestyle. Therefore, again, Robert would probably need to consider either working longer or spending less in retirement. Of course, Robert would also want to consider his other avenues of income. Social Security may be his only one, but he may have access to a pension or other sort of work benefits um, that provide other incomes to him, or rental income, things like that. So let's say, uh, let's see, if Robert has money today, what, how does that change things? That, that changes everything, really. Um, if we assumed Robert started with $50,000 in his 401k, we would just have to change the inputs a little bit. We still are using the 25 years for N, number of years. We're still using 8% of the rate of return. However, now we're going to have $50,000 in the present value because we're starting with $50,000. I said it must be negative because everything must be the same direction. So if payment is negative, if present value, if payment is negative, future, I'm sorry, if present value is negative, PMT must be negative as well. That way we get a positive future value. Think about this as money coming from your pocket. This is money coming from your pocket as well, and this is money that would be returned back to you again on day one of retirement. So, when solving for PMT, we would get a negative $23,628. This is basically $5,000 less because Robert's starting off with some money today. Now, what you can do from here is you can kind of tinker with the various scenarios. You can go into the calculator and say, all right, well, let's say, let's see if Robert achieved a 10% rate of return instead. How would that factor into things? you can see that that would result in a substantially lower uh, annual savings need. If we put this back at eight, but said, well, let's say Robert starts with more money. Let's say he starts with, with $100,000. How would that change things? That would drop it down from the original $28,000 to $18,000 instead. You can play with the different kind of figures. You can see if maybe if he needs to save less money in retirement, if he's willing to have maybe uh, half, we could just half this number as well. Let's say it's 1.04 million. You can kind of tinker around with this and, and say, you know, what are the different um, scenarios and what ifs if I change the different numbers. If he has more time on his side, let's go back to that. 